Hey everyone, this is TB Shores again. Um, I'm going to do what I hope to be a, a short video. I had a subscriber ask me a couple questions. And it reminded me of some information that I had come across uh, during my um, journey of exploring the meaning of the hurricane names. Uh, I do want to point out that in the course of the Lord taking me through this uh, journey of discovering what these hurricane names mean, um, you go back and review, uh, if you don't do anything but go back to the video where I summarized it all into one, um, you need to be aware you know, this isn't like some little fun thing that God had me to do, although it was fun for me. It is about the message that is within these names. And every one of these names is linked to something that has to do with the time that we are in as we watch for the Lord's return. And I think it is a very clear message from the Lord that he is confirming to us that this is the time that we're not to question it, that no one is to question it. He is confirming to us through that, that this is the time. These are the last days. Christ's return is approaching. All of those names pointed to to or was connected to something of that very nature. And it is God confirming to us that we are in the times of the last days and time is short. And, you know, yeah, it was fun to do it. I enjoyed it. But it is also the Lord telling us, okay, this is my handiwork. I put this into design of things and I'm telling you, that all of this points to the time that you're in. These last days. They are on you. Time is short. You need to be searching your heart. You need to be giving it all to Him. All of it. We can't cling to nothing in this world. We have to come to Him with a pure heart letting go of everything. We can't love anything more than the Lord. Nothing. And we have to give it all to Him and let Him be our source every day. Our source of guidance. Our source of help. And we will probably see a time that we will have to depend on Him for our source of provision far beyond anything we've ever experienced. That's why we got to get our heart right with Him. It's got to be right. We can't have none, none of these little petty things. Even the little petty things, you got to let it go. It don't have to be a big something. It can be a little something. Let it go. Get everything right with Him. Confess every little thing. And you know what? The Lord don't even require that we remember them all if we just humbly and with our heart, with the right intention, come to Him in repentant heart and give it all to Him. That's what He wants. He, it's not about, can you do this? Can you do that? It is about coming to Him. Once we have, we have gotten to that repentant heart that He needs us to have, that has the right motives and the right intentions and is only focused on His will. Once we get there, everything else that, that we fret over, well, should I do this and should I do that and what should I do, all that goes away. Because once you have your heart where it needs to be with Him, and it's just simply coming to Him in, in a pure intent, in a, in a pure motive, seeking Him out above all things. And once we've done that, and, and we're seeking Him every day, constantly, 
everything else will fall into place and we don't have to worry about the what ifs and the should I's and and all that. Because once we let God guide us to just giving it all to him and letting him, I, 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 when I pray, I say, Lord, search my heart. If there be anything, anything at all that I need to make right with you, anything at all that's displeasing to you, reveal it to me that I can make it right with you. And he does. And and you go through that purification where you're seeking what he wants for you. And it means more than anything. And once you've done that and, and you're striving for that constantly. And I don't mean every minute of the day, but on a daily basis. And you approach the Lord like he's your friend that you walk with every day. Okay. And you approach him that way. Once you've achieved that with him, he guides you in all the other things that we question and wonder about. And it's like it just comes natural. So we don't need to to be fretting over all these things. Our focus needs to be on just letting him purify our hearts and drawing near to him and just saying, Lord, I give it all to you. I give it all to you. Remove the the sinful, whatever it is. Say, Lord, remove it. Help me to get past it. He will, but you've got to come to him with everything. With a repentant, humble, um right intent heart and I, I don't know any way to explain that except for I know what I know that I felt it inside but my point is that that once we've done that we're his and he guides us and it's with a lot more ease we don't have to work at it so because he is guiding us and it just makes everything everything you see the spiritual meaning behind so many things you never saw before and here i have rambled on and on and i haven't gotten said what i wanted to say so i'm going to i'm going to go to the scripture now i'm i'm sorry people but i just felt led to do that many of us don't realize how important it is to just have that that pure intent in our heart and that's the key to it all when we approach the lord that's the key to it all and he takes care of the rest once we have come to him with that and and we're seeking to maintain that relationship on that level he takes care of the rest um what i wanted to do this on was um The hurricane names, I had a subscriber, Janine, I think is her name. She'd asked me a couple of questions. One is, is there any connection with the hurricanes regarding this study, or is it just a study on the meaning of the names? Well, I think I kind of answered that in the beginning of this and didn't even realize it. it. It's about this being a message from the Lord, confirming to us that this is the the time of of the end these are the last days and time is short and he's confirming it through these names because every one of them points to something of this time okay um and then the next question was what do the descriptions of the names have to do with hurricanes biblically and um it reminded me of something i had found that I felt was very much pertained to um, a biblical idea of um, what maybe God was trying to stress with these names and the message through these names being connected to hurricanes. And I'm going to show you uh, right here in Proverbs, verse 27. 
it says, well, if I can get this on here, when your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you. Okay, there we've seen that destruction will come as a whirlwind. Okay. Um, I do think that that is symbolic, but I do think that it definitely bears meaning here because I'm going to go back and read the entire scripture that this is connected with and you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, okay, I'm reading Proverbs chapter 1. Verse 24 through 33. Because I have called and you refused. I have searched. Excuse me. I got distracted. Some ding went off. Let me start over. Because I have called and you refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But ye have set at naught all my counsel. And would none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear comes as desolation. And your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish cometh upon you. Then shall they call upon me. But I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me, for that they have hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of the fools shall destroy them. But whosoever hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Now, if that does not pertain to where we are and what is about to come about, and it is this destruction, it, it says here, destruction cometh as a whirlwind. So I don't think that it is a coincidence that these names and the meaning of these names all point to these last days. And, and I mean these last days because we saw mostly what referred to um, the bride and the safety of the bride and the providing for the bride and and we did see um some implications in in the name definitions about the the antichrist and the false prophet and the peace the false peace that was coming and and we saw um about the promised land and we saw about the martyrs we saw about the days of noah as it was in the days of noah and there's no way that all those names could be connected to these last days that we are in and it not be the hand of God. And here this verse right here backs it up because it says destruction cometh as a whirlwind. And I'm going to leave it at that. And Janine, I hope that answered your question. And thank you for asking because it prompted me to remember this scripture that I actually should have addressed beforehand. But thank you so much. I hope y'all um, have a blessed night or day whenever this gets loaded because it's taking a while. I love y'all. Bye-bye.